It's game day here at the arena at Harbor Yard with the Fairfield Stags set to take on the Siena Saints. For some people here though, the most action and heart pounding excitement isn't happening here on the court, but in a truck parked outside the arena. Fairfield University's Media Center is producing the event live for television. I'm Steve Botari, and together you and I have an all access behind the scenes pass to see just what it takes to get the action from this basketball court to your living room. We got to the arena at 8 a.m. for the crew call. Mind you, the game is until 3.30, leaving the crew hours for setup, run-throughs, and pre-taping segments. But if that doesn't seem early enough, the producer was in the office until 3 or 4 in the morning prepping for game day. What's cool about Fairfield Productions is that students work side-by-side -side with seasoned television professionals in important roles vital to the show. They get hands-on experience. Some might even call it a baptism by fire. They've been really open to like getting me the experience. Like even even a freshman, most of the times like the like Casey or a or, or a person in a different college would like most of the time like give the work to someone more experienced. But they've been really open to helping me improve. The setup for the game is a six camera setup with two baseline cameras, a camera for a courtside reporter, a main game camera, and a close-up game camera. There's also a camera solely dedicated to the scoreboard. All these cameras mean one thing, tons and tons of cables. Thousands of feet of cable is run from each camera to the mega center and control room for the production, the truck. The truck is a 32-foot all-in-one satellite engineering station, graphics department, audio, playback, replay, directing, producing, and even telephone calls to television stations all happen from this truck. The space is tight and tensions run high because in live TV, there are no redos. Once everything is set up and all the wires are run, the testing begins to make sure everything is working. It rarely ever is. But it's always better to find out at 9.30 a.m. instead of 20 minutes before a game, or even worse, during. Then at noon, the whole crew stops whatever it's doing and has a production meeting. At the production meeting, Casey, the producer, goes over in detail everything that will be on the air. So we'll get all set up. After that, we're looking, uh, announcers will get here about 2 o'clock and we'll start to pre tape the pre game. The producer is the person in charge of the whole production and is at the top of the hierarchy. During game day, you don't want him mad and you don't want to ask him too many questions. They like trust you enough to like tell you things and to give you responsibilities like my first day here Casey like told me to do something and he didn't tell me how to do it he just told me to do it so I was like okay like I'll get this done for you it was very much of an experience of like he tells you 10 things you need to do and you just can't ask questions you just do it and you just have to figure out a way how to do it at the meeting the crew gets a rundown to guide them through the day it's an elaborate spreadsheet describing every moment of television from the minute the satellite time starts to after post-game analysis ends. After the meeting, preparations get underway and some segments are pre-taped while the teams are warming up. Tip-off is still hours away, but the pressure starts building. Courtside, Fairfield students Becky Krause and Kat Riley shoot a segment with sideline reporter and Fairfield alum Bobby Morales. It's crazy. It's totally enthralling. You really feel like you're just a part of it. Um, it's kind of weird though because you're so involved in your little, you know, whatever it is, two by four screen that you don't even you, you don't even know what's going on in the game. You're so involved in your shots, and you know, I don't even know the score of the game. Sometimes I'll I'll barely know if Fairfield's winning or not. Um, so that's kind of weird. It's so weird being actually really close to the game and so heavily involved in it, but at the same time, I have no idea what's going on. Once, like, we're kind of blocking some of the fans, and they pay good money to come here, and we you know we don't want to make anyone upset but uh, it was just a little stressful you know in the middle of the game when we we're having to move over 10 feet which doesn't sound like a lot but you know like when it's the middle of the game to have to move the whole thing over 
and just making sure we can. And so that was just a little stressful. But, you know, people have gotten knocked over when the players run towards the cameraman, you know, just like, it's kind of exciting. I, want, I wish I was got knocked over. Meanwhile, in the truck, preparations of a different kind are underway. Fairfield student Ruby Mateo and Fairfield alum Bridget Lake are working away on creating graphics. Ruby explains what it's like to work in the truck. My position is like, you know, graphics, but I also help um, setting up cameras and coming in like when uh, the, the guys, the cameramen come in. So I learn, I'm, I'm learning about that. I'm learning about like directing, having Mary behind me and showing me camera angles. I sit next to Steve who's doing the um, switching and he like shows me what to do and stuff. So it's, it's not only that I'm learning this, I'm learning everything. And at the same time, in the back of the truck, Andrew Egan, another student, engineers all the shots. We look at all the cameras, and like since they're all kind of different, we got to adjust the iris, which is how much light is let in and out, and uh, the colors of them, so that we match them all up to look the same. So when people are watching at home, when we switch between cameras, it's not as noticeable, like color difference or any like, stuff like that. While back inside the arena, and closer to game time, the camera operators get ready. Up on the game camera is Fairfield student Rob Gruner. I'm the main game camera, so I'm pretty much on 85% of the time, so I'm told. Any stories or any anecdotes of kind of when it didn't go right? Um, only thing I got really was when I was underneath the basket two games ago, I was filming and I lost the ball and when I came back, I had Greg Nero and then another, I think it was a Sienna player that just ran right into me and just took me out. That was the worst I had so far, but... <laughs> I was okay. We had a nice intimate moment. And down on one of the baseline cameras is Adam Karpinski. I sit under the basketball hoops on the baseline. Uh, players coming toward me, uh, keying up on the foul shots, uh, look for coaches, anything like that. Interesting. Uh, tend to get hit a lot as they're coming down. It's fun. It's a lot of, a lot of action. It's given me an uh, opportunity to see what life is like in the broadcasting, like, world, so to speak, uh, what goes into it, behind the scenes, everything. When you turn on a basketball game, you know, basketball games, you know, college, just like two halves and that's it. We're here, you know, 6.30 in the morning, 7 in the morning in the truck. You're setting off for like seven hours before the game actually begins. It, you tend to like, gives you a sort of respect for everything that goes on. As the clock ticks closer to game time, final preparations are made in the truck. In the back, engineering takes place, color correcting and sending out the feed. Two replay operators build packages in real time to play back instantly during the game. And a playback operator preps commercials and segments on players. In the middle of the truck, the audio operator mans a giant board with sounds from the hosts, natural sound from the arena, from music, and from video segments from playback. Next to the audio is the director, who chooses all the shots and constantly communicates with the camera operators. If something goes wrong in a shot, He's the guy that the camera operators hear in their headset. Very, very tense when the game is actually going on. Because you'll see the guys, you'll see everything going on, everyone's on headset. There's no redos. It's not like you're filming a sitcom, it's not like you're filming a movie. There's no retakes, it's live. Whatever happens, happens. If you're shooting live and you lose your balance, you lose your focus, you're gonna hear it and your ear is gonna ring for days. Fairfield student Frank Romano explains that part of TV best. A lot of times people might think, oh Frank, you know, a lot of people seem to be yelling at you, but I don't think of it that way. I think of it as they're just speaking to me in very loud voices <laughs> to get their point across. <laughs> and if you just think that way, you know, you don't get intimidated by those screams that you hear, you know, in the IFB or through someone else yelling at you, telling you, why don't you have that interview, you know? So I think that just mindset will help me going forward in whatever I do. In the front of the truck, next to the graphics, is the switcher, who controls all the cameras and gets direction from the director behind him. And finally, next to him, sits the producer, who oversees the whole operation and is constantly in contact with the hosts in the TV world called Talent via their headsets and earpieces. Back in the arena, now filled with the fans, the teams, and the cheerleaders, excitement mounts not only for the action about to begin on the court, but also the production work as well. Tip-off happens and the game begins. Eventually, the production team finds a rhythm and the game goes smoothly. Oh, what a beautiful shot there by John Hahn to keep the Stags coming at Siena. And now Nero with the block of the Moore shot. Here's the leak out by Hahn and runs down the lead pass and fires and hits the three-pointer to make this a four-point game. And Hahn has the answer. Big time answer on the layup and the three. And the Fairfield faithful is going wild. For Fairfield students Frank Romano, Fiorella Kanai, and Ivy Spate, 
the beginning of the game signals the start of their work and a lot of running around. Frank is courtside as a production assistant. As a floor PA, my job is to coordinate player and coach interviews courtside with the on-air talent. So I work with sports information director Jack Jones for the men's games and Chris O'Connor for the women's games. And it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a pretty intense at times because the players, you know, obviously they want to get to the to coaches meeting in the locker room and you have to try to nab them on their way to the locker room. But if you just ask nicely, you'd be surprised. They're, they're willing to work with you. Fiorella, too, is a floor PA and explained that even though mistakes do happen, you just have to move on quickly. It's a great experience for stuff, like, because it goes out live. So you have to be, like, quick on your toes and you just need to fix problems the second they happen. Also courtside with the best seat in the house is freshman Ivy Spate. It's really, like, hard to explain because, like, in high school, I never even thought I'd be um, courtside at the arena of Harvey Yard uh, talking to, like, a play-by-play -play man and a color commentator. So it's really fun. And now what exactly do you do? What's your role in this whole production? Um, I write down stats for the color commentator and for the play-by-play -play, and every time that a foul is made I tell I relay it to the uh, to the van of how many points they have and what their line is and they really kind of depend on you the, the color commentary and the play-by-play -play, to kind of give them up to the up to the minute fresh stats and it's really important can you kind of explain why it's so important to a production like this because every sports game is like a storyline and in so the stats sometime, most of the time, just improve the storyline. So if the play-by-play -play man is trying to make a storyline about this guy's really been stepping up to the plate or something, then the points will update, the updated points will reflect that storyline. And while the production team tries to tell a story with every game, unfortunately, they can't control the outcome. So we're here now with Frank Romano. The game just ended. Frank, how did it go? It was great production, Steve, but unfortunately we did not come away with a win. It was a little <laughs> ugly today, but hey, these things happen. You win some, you lose some. Well, Frank, you can't do it all. You can't produce the game and win for the team. I thought, I thought you should have been out there, though. I know. I have actually been practicing for Media Center basketball intramurals, so maybe next time they'll let me play and be the sixth man. I don't know. Next game, you'll be the, you'll be the clutch person that, that they need for the win. I know. I, I have, in high school, I often came off the bench and excelled, so <laughs> maybe I just have to convince Coach Cooley. I don't know. That may be the secret. And while Frank considers trying out for the team, every light, camera, and wire needs to be taken down and packed. By this point, the whole crew is running on a mix of caffeine and adrenaline. After all, some have been at the arena for over 12 hours working on little to no sleep. But in the end, they all think it's worth it. Oh, I love it. I wouldn't, I, I like the big pressure situations because you either fold or you, you step up to the challenge. And I, and I like that because that's what TV is. You get, sometimes you just get one shot. And if you mess up, you can't dwell on it because you, there's somebody else coming in the ranks and you just got to keep at it. It's definitely helped. It's definitely just given me more knowledge on just the whole, the whole production like, aspect in, in general. Like now that I've done this, I, I kind of think about going more into sports just because I just think it's really fun, to be honest. I just like, just enjoy doing it. It's definitely a great experience. Uh, I don't know a lot of schools that would let you do this. You get right in there with all these professionals that work here at the media center and they're willing to teach you and it's, it's great, great learning experience. Any hostilities or yelling that occurs during the game is quickly forgotten. Everyone's in a joking spirit and just ready to go home. After finishing packing, the whole crew goes and grabs dinner together. Finally, after dinner, members of the crew go and do something they haven't done in several days. They sleep. Some say it's the best sleep they've ever experienced. <laughs>